we really need a bar down here. Oh! Hello! And welcome once again to Citanium Mine. On this episode, I wanted to talk to you about a little management sim called Tavern Master. You know, I really like my little life sims, you know, the ones where you just, you build yourself a little thing and then you can manage it. Sometimes it's the farming games, the Stardew Valleys and the like, but then there are all of these ones where you get to make your own business. You, you strike out into, you know, your entrepreneurial self and start building something of your own accord. Tavern Master is a little bit like that. You start with a footprint of where you're going to put down your tavern, and then you start populating it with, uh, you know, workers and tables and supplies and eventually a kitchen and eventually, you know, hotel rooms and you unlock new levels. And eventually you'll have this big prosperous tavern that uh, you get to entertain hundreds of guests in every day. That's the basics of Tavern Master, but it definitely isn't the entire picture, because there's a lot of nuance here that I want to talk about. Mainly that even though the game is laid out pretty simplistically so that it's easy to build stuff and rearrange your tables, your chairs, and everything like that, it doesn't do as good a job as actually explaining how to build stuff. Let me see if I can explain that. So when you start putting down tables and chairs and everything like that, you might get the idea in your head that you need to leave like space around these tables so that the waitresses and the patrons and everything can get around you, you know? And, and that would be beneficial. You'd want the tracking of the people to actually track so that they don't get stuck in places until you realize after playing for a while, that you can literally butt these tables and chairs right up next to each other, and the pathing still works. So space considerations become a whole different kettle of fish. Even when you get into the really long tables and you can put seats on the ends of them, you realize that you can actually move these seats just a little bit off to the side if you need space considerations, and they'll still count as seating. You also start to realize that with the inns, there are certain requirements that you need in order for you to have a one-star through five-star hotel room. But what the game doesn't necessarily tell you is that you can put up to five beds in one room, and you'll get money for each one of them which means that the resources you need, like fireplaces or bathtubs, etc., for five-star rooms can account for all five of the beds that are in that room. They also don't tell you that even though these rooms have a window requirement, the windows don't have to actually be facing out of the tavern. You can literally put windows between one room and another room, and if you're looking for decorations, because there's a decoration requirement, you can just put a, a uh, curtain on each side of the window from one hotel room to the next. And you'd say that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Uh, you know, why would I want a window looking into somebody else's room? Just don't think about it too much. Um, you need a door that goes into each one of these rooms, but the doors don't need to be attached to a hallway. So you can literally just put a door on one side of your room, and then on the other side, going into another room. And it will count toward your requirements, uh, but also it will allow you to have larger spaces to put more beds down in each one of the rooms. And you start to realize that as far as space econ goes, uh, you can do a lot better than what the game would suggest to you at the very beginning, and they don't do a great job of it. Kitchens are the same thing. There's a ton of different shelving units and cooking stations, etc., that you need to put down. And at first, I got the idea that, you know, well, I, I want to provide some space around where my soup uh, cauldrons are, and, and I want to be able to, you know, leave them a pathway so that they can get to the spice racks and get to the, the dish racks, etc. Nope, you really don't. Uh, there's, there's a space consideration that they put down for the counters and everything like that, and then, um, yeah, just, just shove everything right next to it. It's fine. They'll, they'll track around it. They've accounted for all of that. Uh, 
you know, they, you start to realize that you have a lot more space to work with, but the game doesn't really explain that to you at the start. So a good portion of my beginning of the game was expanding out into these other rooms that I thought would be nice little venues to try and, you know, create separate spaces until I started to realize that the separate rooms were just putting walls in the way of me being able to build more stuff. And I didn't need to do that. I eventually got to the point where I got to my fourth floor that I unlocked and my basement that I unlocked because there's tech trees. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but eventually I would get to those and I would just leave a giant open frame with no walls in the middle of it and just butt as many of these tables as I possibly could up next to each other with a bar and anything else that I needed. And I just, I'd put down just table after table after table with chairs, just butting them right up next to each other to use every available space. It's that point in life sims where you just get into production mode and you just try to make as much profit as you possibly can and it doesn't even matter if the aesthetics mean anything to you. Uh, yeah, I got to that point by the end. Now, I mentioned that I unlocked new levels and you do. You unlock levels, you unlock the hotel, you unlock a lot of technology in a tree. The way they do that is very interesting because the requirements for it are based on the number of customers that you serve. There are eventually research points, and you get researchers that have to give like light bulb points towards certain ones. But a big key component, especially in the early game, is the kinds of customers that you're serving, whether they be common customers all the way up to like rare or elite or royal customers. And being able to serve those customers, attract them into your tavern, and then serve them successfully is how they track progress for your tech tree. And I thought that that was very interesting. And then when you start to get a little bit more in-depth with how you attract, you know, higher levels of clientele by decorating and providing better aesthetics for your uh, building it becomes more interesting. You know, you start to realize that decorations aren't just necessarily decorations, but they actually unlock a lot of things. You eventually get this round table for adventurers, and the adventurers can be sent out on missions for money, and what they get you are specific resources like uh, fish or turkey that you use in special recipes. And those will even unlock new events. You can schedule an event every three days, and it just basically closes down your tavern to a very specific group of people that you serve with special set prices for different items on the menu. And you can do that, but you need to unlock a few different things, like certain dishes, and you have to have certain ingredients available to you, and you have to have a certain level of decoration. You have to have a certain ambience level in the room. You also get better adventures as you level up the, you know, aesthetics of your tavern. So these systems are all interlocked together. You need money in order to get decorations. The decorations increase the visibility of your tavern, which attracts more guests. More guests come in, and as it starts to look nicer, you get um, higher levels of clientele that will come in that might order more stuff that you can then use to unlock new events and so on and so forth. And then you can use the rare folks that come out specifically for that uh, in order to help you get through the tech tree. So there's a lot of really interesting interlocked systems to each other, uh, but they didn't do a great job of explaining how the layouts of these things work. And I will tell you that I felt a lot more prepared when I eventually got through the uh, main tech tree, built out my entire tavern, and unlocked, you guessed it, a new special tavern. 
you actually do uh, unlock a special tavern. It's called the Winter Tavern. And it is very similar to the original, except it is smaller. And it requires you to have heating. You know, in the base game, you have to make sure that your tables where you're setting stuff down have light. And so you put down chandeliers, which, you know, don't actually take up footprint space. But you can put those lights overhead. Uh, use the good wax, by the way, because um, less chance of fires. They give you fire extinguishers. If, if you remember to put them in, they will remind you, though. At any rate, you need light as one of the main requirements in the main game, but then they also add in the idea that you need heat. And so either fireplaces or these little fire pits uh, will provide that for you, but it then changes how you lay stuff out because they need to take up space in the footprint of your building. So you have to start thinking that through. What I did find is that it was easier to do with the Winter Tavern, even though I had a smaller footprint to work with, because I was so familiar with the mechanics and the little ways that I can get around the requirements for things to really flesh out this place and, uh, and make it make sense to me. There are also a, a couple other systems I just wanted to touch on really quickly. Uh, the weather system, which is that if it's raining or snowing or whatever, it will affect the number of people that are coming into your tavern on a given day. Uh, rainy days tend to not be as busy as sunny days. Uh, there are also mechanics to do takeout menus. You can even give discounts on takeout menus to make more people come specifically to, to your takeout counter. And you can assign people to take out or make that a priority for some of your servers. Uh, and then the other system that I find really interesting is that there is another factor that goes into the number of people that will come to your tavern. And it's not just your decoration level and it's not just the weather, but you can reset prices for drinks very early on in the game. And although food is one of the big things that you sell, you realize that drinks are kind of fundamental, and you unlock different kinds of drinks as time goes on, but you get to raise them or lower them, and the higher you raise them up, the less people come in, uh, and the lower the drink price, the more people will come in to your tavern. And so I thought it was interesting that you can change that on the fly and you will see what the effects are. Uh, so if, especially if you're realizing that your staff is incredibly overworked and you have more people coming into the tavern than you can realistically serve that are going to be happy with it, uh, you might raise your pr prices up to try and limit that a bit. And then obviously as your decoration level and everything goes up, it improves yet again. Tavern Master ends up being a very easy to get into but hard to master game and i think that that's its greatest strength it's the reason why i kept playing because every time that something would come up and i'd go oh i wonder if i can rearrange stuff like this i would get to see if it works or not and sometimes i would rearrange entire floors just to see if i could do something more efficiently even though it didn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, I don't necessarily advise people to do that if they play the game, because you want something that you know looks good to you. You want the personal touch of being able to go to a tavern that looks the way you want it to look. But by the time I got to the basement, I realized that I could make like a real like rustic basement tavern with just tons of seating, and also a place to put all of my like little carnival games that I had unlocked by that point, and the bar, and bathrooms, and everything down there. And I knew the best way to organize all of that by that point. And it still looked good, and I was happy with the design and everything like that. But when you're starting out, you might not know much of that. And it's okay. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be like an expert-level thought process at the beginning, one of the fun things about games like Tavern Master is that you get to uncover it as time goes on. 
And I would encourage people to do that. I do recommend the game, though. I liked it a lot, and I kept playing it. It is surprisingly addictive, uh, because every day you open, you're like, oh, I wonder how today is going to go. The one big piece of advice, though, that I would give you is, although you want to be able to provide enough seating and staffing so that you can do the higher-level missions that require hundreds of people to come to events... The place that you will inevitably get the most money, day in, day out, is in the hotels. So, hotel rooms, once they get unlocked, are probably going to be a priority for you. You you have, like, no resources that you really got to utilize towards them on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to buy food or drinks to manage the hotels. And once the hotels start to get filled up, you just get more money from those than your entire base cost of your your daily running of the of the entire tavern, um, so that you never have to worry about going under. Um, that ends up being a much more lucrative thing to the point where the hotel gets more revenue than like every other facet of the tavern. It's not even close. Make some four-star and five-star rooms and and go wild. Just tap out entire floors. Oh, another little fun little hack, too. Uh, if you need bathrooms, uh, you, can, you can literally just make a bathroom and then put doors off of the bathroom to the hotel rooms, and it still counts as the door to the... It still works. I've tried it. Hallways are evil because they serve no purpose to get you money. So there you go. You know, this is the part where I usually tell you about similar games that I might recommend in it instead of Tavern Master. And the truth is, is that um, I don't really have one. I tried one recently that was sort of in the same vein as Tavern Master, but I don't think I would recommend it over that game. Uh, and it was called Recipe for Disaster. The thing is, is that Recipe for Disaster um, didn't didn't really do what I wanted it to do. It still has the idea of like starting a restaurant and all of that, and putting down tables and and you know creating servers and stuff. And you do hire staff, and the staff are better at certain things. And one of the unique things that you can do in the game is actually build your own recipes. Uh, and then, um, you know, price them out and everything like that. But I wasn't so impressed by the way that it, you know, structured itself. There's a lot of scenarios that it gives you at the start and challenges. And then I tried the sandbox mode and I, I failed like the first day. And I think I failed because like half my staff reached their breaking points and I was given very little space to actually build a functional restaurant to start. So I kept trying to build out into the framework with the money that I had. And I really just kind of wish that I had known that I was going to have to do that because it gets very, very awkward when you're just like, have this one little thing in the corner. I'm probably going to have to play with it more, but I I really wouldn't recommend it over something like Tavern Master. I just think that the layout is not as um good. Neat ideas. I like the idea of building your own recipes and stuff. I wasn't so thrilled with the way that it presented itself and how you could lay out your restaurants and the small tables that you're given. Although I, th I think the idea is that you can make larger tables out of the small tables. Not really a recommendation over, over Tavern Master. So if you got your hot chocolate, where'd you find it? I don't have hot chocolate down here. Are you sure that's not mushroom soup? I do have mushrooms. Wait, let me check. Let me check. Cocoa, cocoa. I I have I have no cocoa at all. Oh, yeah. If you're looking for a bathroom up there, it's basically the woods. 